all right guys welcome to gospel reactions once again thank you so much for all this liking sharing subscribing telling everyone about what we do right here at gospel tv thank you so so much you guys are the best you guys are the biggest you guys are the realest the bestest mvps thank you so much today i've got lala in the building and of course we're going to be discussing something really really important a culture um i mean a couple of cultural defining moments and also some very important personalities mm -hmm. that shaped that helped shape that culture that we have in the music industry at the moment one person who has been very instrumental to that one um lara you're very much welcome sorry thank you sir <laughs> okay so um obio davido is one person who um has gone to several interviews mm -hmm. and of course one major thing that he has always said when he say this music thing how did you start mm. he said you know what when i was in atlanta she said that and everything and they said oh snoop was shooting a video with uh benjazi and the band you know and when i saw them the first time when i saw the band i thought i had met jesus i felt <laughs> like i had met jesus for the first time mm -hmm. that was how much he was very eager yeah. to meet the band mm -hmm. now the big fish white lion the band is one person who has been very very instrumental to um to the whole Afro success afrobeat movement to the world yes. now what's your biggest band song my biggest the band song well i think i'm gonna go with why me why me because as at that 2005 period, why me was one of my no oliver twist no Oliver Twist now. Nah. See, I think the best of the best of the bands that I liked, mm -hmm. I think the first two albums, uh, No Long Thing and Funky Up, mm -hmm. it was back to back hits mm -hmm. on those albums. I mean, he was, then later on, we now know that ah, on the more hits curriculum mm -hmm. and then maybe the Entertainer album, mm -hmm. it was, yes, he still had the hits, but I think my personal mm -hmm. favorites were the first two albums because that, that was the band I fell in love with. And his video till today of um, Mobile One is still iconic. And a video of him also performing at a, at a, at a show in the UK. Mm -hmm. still rings. I, I, mm -hmm. I can still vividly remember mm -hmm. watching and just who saying, Who is this guy? Who is this mm -hmm. guy? And then he went on from there to become one of the biggest Afrobeat stars to come out of Nigeria. So, yeah. Uh, Lala, uh, people have been talking. I mean, a lot of people love stage performance so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know, when people talk about oh this guy knows how to sing oh when you talk about singing just leave this whole thing for one day mm. he's like you don't even argue yeah. when it comes to singing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now is the band the greatest stage performer of his generation well he has a he has a shout to becoming that what you just call him but he himself regards himself he doesn't call himself an artist calls himself an entertainer, an entertainer yeah. because he knows that what he that's what he does that's what he brings to the table mm -hmm. he knows he doesn't have the best of voice mm -hmm. uh, the best of lyrics but when it comes mm -hmm. to entertaining you out performing live being mm -hmm. energetic and all that that's what the band brings to the table and he did it at the top at the very top consistently mm -hmm. but, yeah oh so the thing is the band as an artist mm -hmm. started from 2004 2003 with mobolo came mm -hmm. back from the uk yeah. and of course we had tongolo we had a couple even a whiskey would say oh the band is this the band is that a lot us, yeah. of people see him as a major influence mm -hmm. the new artists today when they want to refer they call baba fella they call to baba they mm -hmm. call the badge and peace square yeah now looking at all of this can we categorically state that the band is a legend or not well to put it in perspective for people who might want to disagree but first to answer your question yes without a doubt but to put it in perspective like he had a span of about let's say five or six years right at the very top from when he started i mean his first album was a hit that even influenced him to come back to nigeria mm -hmm. and then his first album drop i mean funk you up dropping in nigeria mm -hmm. i remember my brother actually sending me the cds of funk you up mm -hmm. and even actually i was even around for, for holidays and he they were all jamming funk you up on my funk yeah, up, my funk. Mm -hmm. it, it was just crazy and he was he was so huge around that period that yes we know that the band was i mean he was so big that when it was time to actually get an international deal from the new crop of alphabet period uh, mm -hmm. uh guys around that period the band had that deal it may have eventually cost him his friendship and maybe his partnership with his long-time friend and partner Don Don Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. but the band his talent was, on, it was undeniable 
you could see that and then also the guys at sony fca that signed him mm -hmm. uh, around 2011 they, they saw this they, they knew what mm -hmm. they saw yeah. and then him now getting international acclaim with oliver twist mm -hmm. getting signed to good music and other mm -hmm. although you can, you can point some i mean some play some points in the career that you can feel oh you could have actually done, done better, better or achieved more yes but then before he got to that point he was on the home turf he was a superstar at mm -hmm. a very high level so uh we could say the band was so big that um this question uh, uh, there's been talk about afro beats to the wall yeah. and all of those things mm -hmm. um was the band the first person to actually start this movement afro beats to the wall i think I actually purchased the the key and the, i mean i mean we talked about something sure. like like that yeah. some, you know, a while ago <laughs> i think he purchased the key and he actually just opened the door slightly mm -hmm. For the potential and then he just started pouring in after mm. that but then he was instrumental because i mean his deal with rc at the time was said to have been the biggest thing signed by any afrobeat star mm -hmm. but and the yeah, there well. was there was yeah there was nothing like a afrobeat international deal mm -hmm. and we know that two-face as big as he was was um closely tight with um what's it called kenny's music Kenny's music yeah they may have a partnership but they were not entirely signed to any international level we also know that p square at one point wanted to get signed by uh Acon, Acon. but that didn't materialize but then in terms of labels the biggest label signing nigerian artists uh, uh the bunch with his uh, sony rca mm -hmm. and even before that with good music sign on to although he may not have done as much as he should have under good music it looked like he I won't say wasted but it looks like he took i mean for for the sake of what he wanted to achieve under the label mm -hmm. he perhaps made some wrong decisions mm -hmm. in terms of the music and he didn't feature as much as he would have liked mm -hmm. under good music projects and everything yeah. i mean we saw we saw him on can you west videos yes he on that that some, some can he appeared on that one yeah, too on oliver, yeah, twist, oliver video. twist and we said that we also know that yes he was part of some of the albums that came out under good mm -hmm. music around that period so then his music may have suffered a bit so i think the guys who came after him now learned from his i mean exploration of the international the experience and and yeah, his own experience they learned from him so that, i think that's the good thing about what the band was able to achieve initially he was able to act as a test for everybody and everyone now has started to i mean they knew what they want now the young cats coming out of nigeria know what they want they've learned from the band learned from uh from uh, david o, learned from uh from whiskey so yeah the new cats they are getting international deals whether direct or even via sub labels and things like that at least they know exactly and there's even more potential like there's even more reach for them they know exactly what they're getting and they know that they're not changing their sound mm -hmm. for anybody they are doing mm -hmm. pure alphabet but they're just using the assets of those labels to to reach the world how impactful was the band's you know um influence on the more hit records crew at that time the band the band the band at the time was was their biggest star Hmm. as an individual artist he was a biggest star and he was also influenced i would say you sold it down to him but the other guys were talented yeah. Waliko was talented uh dr seed was talented but he was also influential in at least he didn't carry the label but he was influential in ushering the new set of guys we saw on Mohit yeah with his why me video mm, some people may not know when they were dancing <laughs> they were dancing that video mm -hmm. when they one of the most talented uh, artists that we that we've come across in nigeria singers as well so he was on that video he was able to usher them in bit by bit he was even able to assist other guys who made their journey from us back to nigeria to meet with ikechuku is his biggest hit record uh what was it well why not well featuring the band beat scene everything i mean the guy was hot another period he you can say he has the same sort of influence who's who is the star maker right now bonoboy Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you can say he had the same sort of influence that yeah. Amir Go has right now in terms of making hit records. Mm -hmm. If the band featured on the song right back then, I'm gonna hit. It's a hit. Yeah. It's a hit. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what would you say was that um, you know, X factor, that extra thing mm -hmm. that actually made the band to become that major star? Some people think, oh, it's his verse on music. Oh no, it's the stage performance. Oh no, it's the charisma. Mm. Some people think it's his personality. Some people think it's the oh shit. Mm. I'm the bunch. All of the kind of things. I think he was he was able to experiment and then then suited for. I mean, they decided to stick to one. He experimented with the 
harmonica mm -hmm. that was unique there was mm -hmm. really no one i mean when as simple as the harmonica i mean people kids used to play with it and feel they were making music but mm -hmm. he was able to make melodies and i mean that was his his unique selling point yeah. that period before then he came to nigeria i can remember vividly he came to nigeria with don jazzy they were having interviews and what were they doing don jazzy was not talking mm -hmm. he was the hyper energetic mm -hmm. then don jazzy would just be to his ears you say don jazzy say can you something something mm -hmm. so <laughs> they were able to they were, those the duo the duo both of them they were able to create something unique and it wasn't just one time different things at different intervals mm -hmm. the harmonica him and the uh, don jazzy, don jazzy up. yeah don jazzy was a bit quiet with the uh, walking stick him on the side mm -hmm. doing the all energetic i mean mm -hmm. you see on top 10 countdowns where they are there and very cool guys something mm -hmm. we've not seen before in nigeria mm -hmm. so he later on moved on to his coco master mm -hmm. based on that performance at the head is <laughs> with the tour yeah so that was crazy, crazy actually crazy, yeah. so one yeah. of the most iconic moments actually <laughs> <laughs> so he had different <laughs> moments where he now i mean he's used several assets of his in terms of his persona in terms mm -hmm. of how he goes about his business those were the unique selling points of the bunch and those were and his ability to always come up with things that are unique that nobody ever does in terms of the, the energetic way of singing mm -hmm. or his or performing on stage and things mm -hmm. like that that's those are the things that make the bunch a special one and makes him someone we can refer to as being legendary as of today yeah, so they, yeah. okay i mean we've said we've said a whole lot but uh legends also do come you know with their own you know downside here yeah. and there mm -hmm. um the uh, moment split from uh don jazzy wasn't really really um okay mm -hmm. but of course uh before then mm -hmm. the, um, the band actually had that like, nation's cup song with top of the world yes definitely. and then at the global citizens uh festival yeah. in south africa mm -hmm. you know 2018 those, those, yeah, I think, no, was those were as a result okay yeah i remember that but i those, saw the news mm -hmm. that on the second day after that performance yeah. uh, after performance and everything yeah. he was the only one as in beyonce came usher came yeah. but he was the only one on the pages of south african newspapers as because the of the performance, performance yeah. it was so good mm -hmm. that south africans kept talking about it for months that like oh more this guy he's he, still, he, he still said he is rich that's why he had this oh uh, i'm skipper and like my jamaican first come because mm -hmm. he did appeal to jamaicans yeah from his own like my south african like he did appeal mm -hmm. to south africans mm -hmm. so his reach was massive mm -hmm. and then he was good at what he did mm -hmm. in that period so he, these days you, you may find him being chilled and not doing as much music wise mm -hmm. but while he was at his peak he mm -hmm. was untouchable okay anything else you want to say the band mm, the band legendary i would say mm -hmm. uh, regardless of the bad uh, news you've had recently mm -hmm. whether guilty or not guilty but these things are part of his journey mm -hmm. that, like we've always said yeah but then that's also take the fact away that he is indeed a legend of Afrobeats and he has ushered in and he has created a lot of uh value for what mm -hmm. Afrobeat is today mm -hmm. and it was part of the journey so yeah okay so um finally uh before we go mm -hmm. the band is uh, also seen as someone who is quite entrepreneurial oh, yeah. uh, you know in that uh, point and everything mm -hmm. i mean it was it's it's on record according to a couple of people about oh the whole leg big bed thing through his oh, screen yeah. platform <laughs> and all of those things yeah. but artists do also have their downside yeah, yeah. and in terms of downside the split from don jazzy wasn't a very palatable one yes it wasn't and then I, what i like about um how it has fed right now is boots individuals are doing good they're yeah. not they're not doing too badly they mm -hmm. i mean don jazzy has taken his own passion from being a producer to now being a label owner mm -hmm. although the uh, the band had tried to be i mean db records at one mm -hmm. point did have artists on the roster mm -hmm. but he wasn't able to push, push. forward with that mm -hmm. but then again he's still <coughs> seen right now as a valuable brand, brand to yeah. invest in or to, mm -hmm. to partner, partner with, with yeah. and that's 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 saying that's, that's, good, that's good enough for him mm -hmm. as it is right now and so shout outs to the band shout outs to don jazzy shout outs to the band shout outs to don jazzy of course you've read it all from the man himself lala the band influence on the likes of whiskey david o and every other nigerian artist mm. of his generation legend or not lala right here says legend ticked what do you think who exactly is the band to you and how well would you rate his contribution and of course his influence on the nigerian pop culture afro beats to the world i was so young then when i saw that old mr endowed video you, which you're so young how would you be well i was i was i was in my i was in my 20s i was young still a young boy oh still a God. young boy oh <laughs> but that video actually 
for a couple of people mm -hmm. totally redefined flex you know it was it was fun, it was fun fact, flex fun fact the Oliver twist challenge i uh, participated in the university challenge you did i had like let's say fifty thousand views whoa on my youtube I was on the ice rink and doing all the batteries. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> anyway, shout out to the band, shout out to Don Jazzy. These guys, legends of the game, no cap. As in, no lies at all, no fact cap. on fact. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have challenges and all of that. And it does not take away the fact that these guys have built something that the you know, guys coming or the guys right now also are enjoying mm -hmm. from. The collaborations with international artists yes, this yes. guy started it all yeah, yeah you get and someone was saying when the band had his collab with um um, um snoop dog this kid was still yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so all of those things i mean shout out to this guy guys we want to hear from you as well the band legend or not let us know and of course we will respect each and everyone's opinion. We love you and we'll see you on the next one. Keep liking, sharing, subscribing. Peace.